All right, what's going on? I know you cannot answer that. In this episode, it's going to be extremely chill. I believe it's ep- episode 12, maybe 13 of Forbidden Authenticity Within. This episode is not for everybody. It's going to be a bit shorter, but the reason why it's not for everybody is because I will be sharing four very unconventional ways that I live my life that have brought me the most, that has allowed me for the last six months or so, maybe more than that, for the last six months to live in the most to live the most hap- to live the most happiest fulfilled content satisfied life that I have ever lived and I'll be sharing four things that are probably not in your life right now. And I'm not saying they should be. Four ways I I live my life that are definitely, definitely, definitely a part of me being the happiest, most fulfilled version of myself I have been in my entire life. Even though I I share that, I'm not saying you should do this. But the reason why I share these four things is maybe one of them might resonate with you. Maybe one of them might feel very true to you. Maybe it's a thought you've kind of had before, but you've never acted on it. And that's what this is for. And also it's it's kind of for like giving a different perspective on living. As I know for me, when I was not enjoying life, I had a very strong, a very strong script on how I should be living and what the things I need to achieve are to be happy. And things like this. And for a, for a, for example, one of my most apathetic, de- depressed times in my life was when I had I mean this is so common you hear it but I had all the things that people men would a man would strive for like getting lots of money getting lots of girls seeing a lot of girls at the same time like being an entrepreneur, being your own boss, working wherever and whenever you want to. I remember this time I was seeing um, multiple girls and making a lot of money. And I was feeling so depleted inside. And the way I live my life now is very different than that very different and I will share it with you now maybe some things will resonate maybe some things will be disgusting to you let's find out I I wrote them down here so I want to make sure I get them Um, all spoken out loud the very first thing is probably my my most can is my most conventional thing I'm going to share here. You have probably heard it before, but I'm sure it's still unconventional to a lot of people. And it's doing something very difficult every day. Every day doing something I don't want to do. And I found the more difficult things are in my life, the easier my life is. And there's actually a quote that I wrote down from Fred from Frederick ne- from Frederick Nietzsche, the philosopher. He says, um, P- um, he says, I found life easy 
easiest when it demanded the most difficult things of me. I found life easy, easiest when it demanded the most difficult the most difficult things of me. And what I have found out is if you just live your life, you go to your job every day and you do the same things and it's comfortable, you have that relationship or you don't, or you're playing video games, you're watching porn, your life's comfortable. Life's not that difficult. And when your life's not that difficult, you make your, your, your life is now on hard mode. When your life is easy, now the problems and the, 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 the emotions and the, and the situations that arise in your life feel like they're on hard mode. But when you make your life difficult on purpose, you do difficult things on purpose, you get desensitized to such a high level of stress. You get desensitized to such a high level of difficulty that everything else in comparison is fucking easy. And I have a few different difficult things I do every day, or at least a couple, and I'll share them with you right now. The first thing is I wake up at a time that I don't want to wake up at. It used to be at 3.30 in the morning. Now it's at 6, um, which changes the time I go to sleep. But when I when the when the alarm hits at 6, when it sounds at 6, I never want to get up. But I do not stay in bed. I get up. And that is difficult. But if I were to stay in bed doing the more comfortable thing, doing the, e doing the easier thing, the rest of my day would be more difficult. But doing the difficult thing the first thing in the morning, the rest of my day is easier in comparison to what I just did. And it feels emotionally easier. It feels mentally easier to go throughout the day, which gives me more space to and to and to enjoy to to flow to not get caught in stress so it's not only do i get up at a time i don't want to get up at but i go and do something i don't want to do and it's for the past six months it's been cold shower fucking as cold as it gets or when i was next to a lake i would go straight into the lake freezing cold and do 10 very slow breaths in the lake or in the shower and there's more things to my routine but those two things getting up at a time I don't want to get, get up at and the cold shower or the cold lake right after I get up is the most difficult thing maybe in the whole day like in the morning, that's the last thing I want to do. Every single day, I'm not thinking, oh, I can't wait to get in that cold shower. No, the bed's so warm, but I do that difficult thing, and the rest of the day is easier. And I know in the past, when I was depressed, and I was, at, and I was apathetic, and tired, always tired, my, my life was so comfortable. It was so comfortable. I wasn't making it difficult. So in comparison, washing dishes was was dif was dif was difficult. Cle cleaning up after myself was difficult. But now it's completely changed. Where that shit is like, it's I'm just you create a momentum of doing difficult things that your life is very very easy. Um, and then also in the afternoon. I I uh, do a very hard workout, so either yo or either yoga where I push my limits. I at least hit a uh, I hit fail. I hit fail. I hit failure, or very 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 close to it. Um, or actually a gym workout. I usually alt. I usually alternate one day yoga, one day a gym workout, and then I go into the lake. And so. And the first 
right now it's a shower, a cold shower in the morning, but after the uh, workout, it's straight into the lake and it's freezing cold here. I'm in Czech, Re Czech Republic right now and the water is absolutely freezing, absolutely freezing. Um, I do that every day. I, I never want to go into the water, but I do it. And my, and what I have found is uh, it's on the days where I have rest days, where I'm not doing that difficult thing, where I get, where I wake up and I go on my phone, which is not common at all. But I, I know on those days, those days suck. But it's on the days where I do hard things that my life is easy, that my life is fun, that I'm happy, all right? And I do not believe that's just like a, something that's taught to us to do hard things. If you're not doing something hard you're, you're, and you're being lazy, you can't be happy. I don't believe that's a, a societal thing taught. It is, but I believe that it's a primal biological thing inside of us that um, makes us feel good when we do hard things. So that's the first thing, all right? I do difficult things, because if my life isn't difficult, if I don't make my life difficult, it's gonna be comfortable. I can make my life so fucking comfortable right now, but then I'll be sad, and then I'll be depressed, and then I won't be in life. I won't be living in life. I'll be just like the observer, feeling disconnected. And I've lived that way for a lot of my life and do not suggest it. So let's go on to number two right now. And this has been really huge for me. So I told you about like, there's been times in my life where I've dated multiple women at the same time, had the rotation that people always dream of. And that was, that was the time I was not, I was always tired. I was so, I was so comfortable and not growing, not expanding. Um, and what my life's like now is I do not do hook, I do not do hookups at all. And this this has been a rule for me for like the past year. I do not do hookups. I only have sex with with girls that I want to build some. I want to build something with. I will not have sex with a girl if it's purely for sex. Given I'm human and there's times where there is an exception to that rule where the emotions are extremely high, extremely high. And I'm, I know this is just gonna be sex but because the emotional connection is so strong, sometimes I, I do have sex in that. But if there is no, if there's no hugely strong emotional connection, and it's not someone I want to build something with, there's no chance I'm going to have sex with them. When in the past, I would have sex with basically anybody that would have sex with me. And this left me depleted. This this left me aimlessly looking around at people, not having a clear standard, not having direction, just giving my energy out in all directions. And this caused a lot of sexual dysfunction. Living this way caused a lot of sexual dysfunction. And I've gone into this, why this is in, maybe it was the first or second or third episode. I don't believe it's on YouTube. It's on Spotify, though. You can listen to it on Spotify, um, Forbidden Authenticity Within Podcast. So that's a huge change. That's a huge change in my life where, like, I, I have not had sex in a few months now because I have not met somebody who I want to build something with or that I have a hugely strong emotional connection to. And the past me would have thought to myself, 
would have seen that and been like, well, this dude's obviously not li not li not living life. When I tell you, I've been the happiest. I have been the most full inside in conversations, in interactions. I've been able to be my best self. I've been awake. I've been alive. I've been present, not depleted because I just wasted my energy. It's completely different. I feel so confident. I feel so much respect for myself as well. And this will also show when I do meet somebody who I want to build something with, or I feel a very, very, very strong emotional connection to, the sex will be not a repeat experience of like, well, this is how, how I've had sex in the past, like because I'm just having sex with everyone that I can have sex with. Now, this will be so different than anything I've ever had and anything she's ever had because it's coming from such a much more authentic place. I didn't word that that well, but I think maybe you can pick up on that. So that's been really huge for me really huge for me not throwing my energy around not looking oh i'm gonna have sex with her just because she's hot or i'm gonna yeah like i'm not pulled to that anymore and it's because i know that sexual dysfunctions will arise again and again and again if i do have sex in that way and i know i will just be the I know I will be depleted. I'll feel like shit. I'll be tired. And I won't be my best self in everyday interactions if I give my energy away like that. And also, if I'm wasting that I'm wait if I'm wasting that energy and I meet somebody who would have been someone I want to build something with, but because I'm tired and lethargic and apathetic because I just had sex with someone that I just had sex to have sex with, I won't be able to be myself in that moment. I won't be able to show up how I want to show up. And that that's everything to me. I want to be able to show up exactly how I want to show up myself in every interaction I, I, I go into. Because when I have sex with someone that I want to build something with, with this very strong emotional connection, the next day I'm, I'm not tired. I'm not, I'm not lethargic. I am boosted up. I feel more energized. I feel more powerful. I feel more respect and everything with myself so that's been really fucking huge for me the third thing this may this is something you probably have never heard because it's an idea that i'm playing with then the next two are ideas i'm playing with i'm not saying they're right all right i'm just saying this is the way i've been living my life and I've conceptualized it in my mind in a way where I can speak it out. But it's not something that I've really, I've thought first and acted in this way. It's just the way I've been acting. And now I realize what I'm doing. That's made my life very, very, very fulfilling. Sounds, it sounds very different, but I have, mul I have multiple sources of tension in my environment and if you've seen my videos in the past where i talk about stuttering or i talk about premature ejaculation stuff like this you may see you you may see tension as a bad word like i want to avoid tension that type of tension is the re is the repressed tension is the the tension you trying to uh, you trying to avoid it's the tension in the body that um, you're repressing that causes this stuttering 
but the tension I'm, and the premature ejaculation and stuff like that. But the tension that I'm talking about is in my life, it, it, it can be more, it can be more than this. But in my life right now, I'm talking about se- I'm talking about sexual attention. So, although I'm not having sex with random people and doing ho- and doing and and having hookups and stuff like that, I am I do have sources of sexual tension in different environments in my life, and I've. I've lived in this way for a while. I found found this the most enjoyable um, way to live where I... So, I won't talk about the sources of tension I have in my life right now. That may be a little bit too real, as like some people may watch this, that, I'm, that are in my life right now. But I'll talk about... A few months, a few months, a, a few months ago, where um, there is a girl at a cafe that I would go to, that I just like we had this sexual tension, where like it's just it's just through the eyes and through the smiles and how long we held how long we held eye contact for we both felt this sexual tension but i was not acting on it i i was not going and take and take and take and take taking this girl home because i have learned that that kills the tension the next time I go into the cafe after we have sex, the tension's not there. It's not, it's not the same. And one thing that I've learned is I would much rather live um, in a place where there's suspended tension. I'd much rather live a life where I have suspended tension with different people than having sex with each one of those people or doing that thing that kills the tension with that person because then there's nothing left and and i this is just an idea all right this i'm not saying this is right but this is the way i've lived my life and it makes it very it makes me show up the best show up it makes me inclined to to show up even more myself everywhere i go if i create a tension with a girl at the grocery store the girl, the girl at the cafe, the girl at work, the girl um, that I pass by on when when I walk, the girl, blah 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 blah. You you have different sources of tension. Not like all like they're they're all just waiting to bang you, but just like little tensions, little love stories, just in them, just in the just in the making, but are not ripe yet. That I feel um, is a very fu- a very fulfilling way to live. And again, I'm not saying this is right, but creating unresolved love stories in different places. And I'm not saying like you have to talk to them and flirt with them in a way where it's very, very clear that this is a love story, but it's just like little eye contacts you hold it a little bit longer and you you make it clear with your eyes that you you see her you see him as beautiful and creating that little tension life of little tensions little sexual tensions i find very uh very exciting to live in that life because it's like wherever I go, I know, like it's 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 like it's like you're it's like you're picking the book back up. So it's like the the tension with the girl at the cafe. When you're there, 
you're adding to you're adding to the love story in the book. When you leave, you close it. Or when or maybe you're you're reading the the love story and when you enter that cafe again, it's like, oh, let's see what what else continues inside this book. And you you have these different stories, different love stories everywhere you go. Okay, so this is like something I've conceptualized now to explain it to you but it's it wasn't a thought that i've had and let's go on to the fourth and final thing that i want to share here that is very uncon very unconventional but has allowed me to live a life that i've been very very happy and fulfilled and been my best self and this is this like there's two parts to this one is that my per my purpose my direction in life is absolutely priority number one over everything okay where i want to go in life what i want to do what i want to create what my purpose is where my direction is i'm extremely connect connected to that that is priority number one I used to think like this. I used to think like this, but then there'd be a girl that would come into my life and then she would be number one. And then I'd be kind of hazy on my direction in life that I wanna go and I'm like putting all my energy into this girl. And it always fell apart. I always lost myself. And I have found that not only is it the most attractive, not only is it the healthiest, not, not only do I feel the most abundant and self-respect and self-esteem and self-confident when this is true with me, where my purpose is number one. I don't know where I was going with that. So this is just me saying purpose is always number one for me. And this is again a thought not the purpose the purpose number one has been a thought with me for a while but i've been thinking and conceptualizing this thing because this idea about in this idea about intimate relationships and again i'm not saying this is right this is prob this is probably not true or not right for a lot of people but for me in my life right now it's true it's it may change it probably will change but I'm just giving you something to resonate with if that res if it's a possible thing for you to resonate with. And what it is, is like I think of my life as like my per as like a meal. Okay. My 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 life is like a meal where my purpose and my direction and my vision where my life is going, what I'm doing is like the steak it's the meat it's the protein and then the carbs so like the potatoes or rice or whatever goes with this meal is my fitness and my men and my and my health so like my mental health my physical health my spiritual health and then the veg the vegetables in this meal are my friendships are my can are my are my connections so my socializing in my life and that to me makes a very great life that to me makes a very great life just like that makes a very great meal a very well balanced meal and how i'm viewing intimate relationships now is not something that replaces the vegetables or replaces the carbs or god forbid re replaces the purpose which is the that meat that that protein but rather the intimate relationships is the salt it's the salt. It's the things that make it's the thing that makes everything taste a little bit better. It's the thing that makes that gives it a little more flavor, life a little more flavor that makes it 
life have a little more co a little more color. But if you remove the salt, you will still have a well-balanced meal. You aren't lost. You're like, oh, what am I going to do? No, it just tastes a little bit more bland. It tastes a little bit more bland. But you would not kill somebody. Or you, you, you would not, that's the wrong thing to say. You would not, you would not, you would not sacrifice your protein for salt. You would not sacrifice the carbs for salt. You would not sacrifice the vegetables for salt. No, salt is just something that gets added on on top. And that's the way I've been thinking about it recently. As, like I've told you, I've lived a life where I've had many relationships. Um, like some just with one person, some with many. And... Sometimes they re they replaced my social life, or they re, or they replaced my purpose, or they changed the order of things, and I always lost myself, and I always found I was always unhappy, and w and I found when I didn't have any intimate relationships, which has been like a period of months now, I've been extremely extremely happy extremely happy and in in the, like the last six months or the last few eight months or so when there is an intimate relationship viewing it as not a replacement to anything but just like a little sprinkle of salt um or maybe a lot of sprinkle of salt or maybe she's the fucking salt and the pepper and the oregano and all the spices. Maybe it makes my life fucking so flavorful. But it's, I still would not replace the meat or the vegetables or the potatoes for salt and all those spices. Because, yeah. It's an unfinished thought. But that feels very true to me to living a life that I want to live. I'm not saying it's true for you. But it has made it has allowed me to be my best self and allowed me to feel the happiest as I've had the opposite of that and I was not happy. So that's four very unconventional ways of living that I live that have allowed me to be very happy and grow a lot grow a lot feel very uncomfortable and face dis face discomfort and uh just do very very uncomfortable things but it makes me feel like i'm in life i'm in life and i'm feeling everything I'm feeling the sadness i'm feeling the anxiety i'm feeling the fear i'm feeling the love i'm feeling so much depth of things depth of emotion um yeah all of the things i share most most likely will not land with you but some of them may and i'm not saying you have to change your life at all to try to fit in what i said absolutely not i'm just sharing me at 25 years old living a introspective um, self-aware life being able to share these things with you can provide some value um, depending upon where you are in your life if you have any questions for me any questions you want me to answer there is a there is a link down below in the description where you can ask me a question and I will answer it on the next show so with that being said I will see you in the next show. I have some really fucking cool guests coming up. And uh, be excited for that. Peace.